Soon, welcome to another episode of Tech Talk with a Fool. Yeah, fool. And as usual, I have my co host Ife and Kester. And um, Taufik, we, I mean, we probably will eventually make Taufik <laughs> co host himself, right? <laughs> Our conversation last week was centered around how to switch. Uh, from whatever career you have now, you know, into high paying international and local tech jobs. And, and as usual, like we normally will do, we want to see things from different perspectives. Um, we looked at the perspective of a typical Nigerian youth, and we also looked at, you know, the reality of work, both Nigeria and of course, um, international. <laughs> So today, our focus is around Nigerians in the diaspora. I mean, Nigerians are scattered all over the world. You know, Taufik is, he he has a project around that now. And I really want us to talk about it because what Taufik is doing is really amazing. Um, Firstly, for example, according to the World Bank, as of 2020, there there were over um, 21 million Nigerians living in the diaspora. That's 2020. Now imagine what the numbers will be now, right? In the United States alone, we have about 1.5 million. When I say 1.5, 1.5 are the um, documented, right? South Africa, is that correct? When we say 1.5, those are the have yes, on sir. record. That's the 1.5. You know, um, we sometimes we forget that every um, every environment is unique in its own ways. What works in Nigeria may not necessarily work or will not work in the US. That's the honest truth. Uh, when Uber was coming to Nigeria, they had this idea of uh, we're going to do uh, people were going to pay through card. But by the time they got to Nigeria, they realized that people still use cash. So they had to put on their app the option of cash. Okay, yeah. so, so you have to um, adjust to the reality of your market because it's the market that actually determines uh, what you sell. So, so marketing, like I learned in ABC where myself and uh, uh, Afolabi met, is uh, making what you can sell, not selling what you can make. When you sell what you can make, you are forcing you know, your capabilities on people. But what, when you make what... Uh, you can sell. You're actually looking at what the market wants and you're tailoring your solution to the market. I haven't been to abroad before. And uh, one question I always want to ask. You now know, that you know Taufik, you are coming to earth. So don't worry, continue. <laughs> so one question uh, always uh, that has been bugging my mind is uh, how do Nigerians, like how do we, how do we maintain this sense of belonging. You know, uh, you get to US or UK and you know that uh, these are countries that are tagged with um, this low culture, like we, we see them as countries that don't have culture. And me coming from Nigeria, um, there are some uh, things I have to like uh, adhere to as regards uh, my culture. So, and my own fear is when I get there, <laughs> I still want to, uh, Maintain my maintain your culture. culture, and also how do I maintain this sense of belonging in uh, abroad? So uh, I'd really like to get an answer to that. Ah, but what gave it solid foundation was is the fact that if you check, you know, in several industries, especially movie movie industries and. You know, other and you, you check the black people that are not that are not Americans there, the successful ones, like the really successful ones, you will find that a lot of times they are usually Nigerians, yeah, right, from Nigeria, even in UK, even in the music and all of that. So it just solidified this this idea I had that you know, go through Lagos for. 20 years, 25 years, and move to move. No way you are going to do. But now, hearing from you, 
is on top of it. That there is a huge number of people or percentage of Nigerians over there that you know they when they get there they end up in the garage working for this and that caregiver mm-hmm. all those basic and small time jobs right that it gives the impression like you are stuck as to use your word so now I I began to reflect while we were talking and, and I started thinking again that this my idea or my impression before had just been you know, limited, <laughs> popular, <laughs> the popular people and all of that, that in reality, that's not, that's not actually yeah. how it is, right? So you have to go through. So now, for me now, for example, because I'm also subscribed to the um, to the idea of Jack, because I know some people aren't, but I am. So my, my laid out, not so laid out, but laid out plan, for this jackpot, right? Involves several things, but in in not to go into too much details, with the plan I had in mind, I was seeing myself assuming a position of, you know, proper comfort, right? In six months to one year. So my question is, for someone like me, myself, it's my profile and maybe with a little more, Right, that decides to go to the US and you know, for to hustle, right, to make a return living. How can that kind of person like me, or how can I, right, go about my process? And this, this um, obviously, this I central and the whole thing is about has is like an answer, yeah, right? But somehow, I I would like to hear. A, a, a bit down step, step, by, step, step, by, step, by step process, right? As to how you can go about this and not fumble or not fall down on your feet or be deported back to Nigeria. So by the time I got into US last year, uh, we wanted to replicate the model that we had in US or uh, in Nigeria haven't been successful, you know, a little bit in what we do, you know, do our consulting, our training. We realize that that's not what the market wants. There, and I did my market research, talking to friends and other people. And I realized that there are lots of Nigerians, Africans that are stuck in, in the warehouse. There are a lot of Nigerians that are stuck in care work. There are a lot of Nigerians that are stuck in what we call tarmac. Okay, okay, <laughs> and we know that they don't want to move. Of course, there's always a, a stepping stone when you come into the US. US is actually big, okay. And the first thing you want to do because from the day you land, you have bills to pay for your rent. Unlike Nigeria, where oh, you guys go and chill with one uncle for one year, he's paying the light bills, he's paying, it doesn't happen this way. All right, from the phone you make, the phone call, you can get a phone line in Nigeria and you choose when to recharge. No, here you have to be on contract. So your bill starts running every day and that keeps you working. So you need to find a way of generating income. So when you get into the system, if you don't have any source of- I haven't been to a group before. And uh, one question I always want to ask. Now that that you know Taufik, you are coming to earth. Don't worry, continue. (laughs) So one question uh, always uh, that has been bugging my mind is uh, how do Nigerians, like how do do we maintain this sense of belonging? You know, uh, you get to US or UK and you know that uh, these are countries that are tagged with um, there's no culture, like we, we see them as countries that don't have culture. And me coming from Nigeria, um, there are some uh, things I have to like uh, adhere to as regards uh, my culture. So, and my own fear is when I get there, <laughs> I still want to uh, maintain my maintain culture. Your culture. And also, how do I maintain this sense of belonging in uh, abroad? So, uh, I'd really like to get an answer to that. Ah, 
who come on F1 visa, they come on, you know, different kinds of visas, Pasta visa, and to start because they have to put food on the table. They wouldn't know where to start. And whatever you start working on, you may get stuck. So what we realize is that a lot of Africans or Nigerians are stuck. So the first thing is speaking to friends. They made me realize that this model of your business that has worked in Nigeria may not work here. Your competitors are even multi, you know, multinationals <laughs> that are, you know, they are ready to kill you with a wimp of, you know, um, you know, you know. <laughs>